Welcome to the Fish North Georgia podcast, where we talk everything fishing here in North Georgia. Make a cast over that brush pot and bring wolf packs of spotted bass up. Georgia is blessed with so many of these electric only lakes. No, I didn't say that, Danny. Don't, okay, don't so, be speculating uh, now. So okay, guys, we are back, and I am with Scott Edwards of Elko today. How you doing, sir? Doing good. How you doing today? Thanks for having me. Uh, you, the, the pleasure is ours. We're glad you made the trip down from Blairsville, right? Correct. Blairsville, Georgia. Beautiful Blair. Lake Notley. Lake Notley. We're going to get to Lake Notley here in good. a little bit. So how was your drive? Because it's not next door. It was good. I actually came in from Gainesville today. So we also still have a place in the Athens-Jefferson area. Okay. So I come from there today. I've got our boat storage facility up there in Blairsville. So we're back and forth a lot. So I actually came in from there today. Okay, well, good. And I'm glad that it would have been a prettier drive if you had come down from Blairsville. Though. That's right. I'm not, I'm not knocking my Hall County people like that, but it is what it is it at is some what point. It is. Um, okay, so we're going to cover a lot today. And you're going to actually introduce our audience a little bit to the Elko uh, line of products and stuff uh, down the line in this podcast because – You are a fisherman, and you are an outdoorsman, and so we want everybody to get to know you a little bit. So maybe give us just a little general bio real quick of who Scott Edwards is. Sure, yeah. I was was born and raised in the Athens area up near Jefferson, Georgia, and I've been an avid fisherman my whole life. You know, that's what I've done. But we've done most of our fishing from the banks when I was a kid. We never had a big bass boat. And so when we got out and doing the fishing in these small lakes, you know, we've done it with John boats. I mean, that is my background is John boat fishing. So right. probably about 1999, I was down at the Buckarama down in I rem- Remember that, those did, days? I remember those days. <laughs> now, was it at the Dome? No, it was um, It was out by the, I guess, where the flea market or the farmer's market is. Just south. Just south, okay. correct. Okay, I remember going to one that was by the Dome, like around 90 or 91. Right. But okay, yeah, I remember those days at Buckarama. Right. That's old oh, school. Yeah, it's been a while. It has been a while. But I went by a booth, and it was the Patriotic Bass Anglers. And okay. I'm like, okay, what's this? Well, it was a John Boat Club, and I'd never heard of one at that time. So that's kind of how I got going. There was two John Boat Clubs. It was the PBA, which was Patriotic, and the JBA, which was the John Boat Association. Okay. And that was yeah. it. Right. Two clubs. I mean, yeah. that's all there was. And now there's probably 20 I or more. I, I mean, can't keep up with you them. You can't keep yeah. up with them. It's kind of exploded, and this has kind of been through a 20-year process. And right. So, yeah, so I want to share with you all some today about that growth. Yeah, that's excellent. It's funny you say it's kind of exploded, but, you know, in reality it is. It's been like a 20-year just kind of has been evolution of the sport. You know, it just seems like it's hot right now, but it, it, it's it's taken a while to get to where we're it at. Has. So it has. It's come um, a long way. So you say you grew up in Jefferson, bless your heart. That means you were hot all the time. Every time I go through Jefferson, it's 150 degrees even in December. To Seems me. that way. It just does. <laughs> we have words for it, but I'm not going to bring it out on this. <laughs> Actually, Jefferson used to be our uh, rivals in football. Okay. And especially from my son growing up through Park and Rec, and now there's just a lot of, you know, love-hate with Jefferson and all that. But it's Correct. a great place. But great like, community. It is, and, and good schools and all it out is. there. It's very good. Now, out there, though, I mean, what was the what's the big lakes out there as far as – uh, what you fished back in the day because I know there's been lakes built since then but basically farm ponds when you first got started when I first started it was farm ponds right. and then they had a program back in the late 70s early 80s to where the government would build these watershed lakes mm-hmm. on people's property right and we actually had access to a lot of these watershed lakes you know to fish and that's how we got into john boat fishing okay absolutely so, so who just because everybody has a start who influenced you the most growing up fishing Oh, it would be my dad. Your dad. Yeah, he's, he's, he'll be 79 this year, and he still loves to fish. Still he, loves to fish. Yeah, That's awesome. your hero right there. He, is, he took us fishing. We'd go fit farm pond fishing. We'd There'd be three of us in the John boat out there fishing. So, yeah, my dad is who got me into fishing. That's, Absolutely. That's awesome. And it seems like uh, with a lot of our podcasts lately – one of the recurring themes is people just take kids fishing, you know, take, take your children fishing, get them outside, and uh, you never know just what that one trip will do to somebody that's and how that, how that changes it. So mm-hmm. that's that's totally awesome Good. Uh, that your dad does that, and I'm glad he's still with you. He that, that he's seventy. Awesome. He'll be seventy nine, and he's in phenomenal shape. It's amazing. It is. I can, amazing. Only, I can only hope I'll be in that kind of shape Listen, when I'm seventy nine. If I get past sixty, I'm just gonna let myself go. You know, sixty is the magic number for Absolutely. me. Absolutely. But, but no, that's awesome. I'm glad he's still here. Okay, so. You know, you said you had the P. So you joined the PBA at that time. Yeah, it was the Patriotic Bass Anglers back then. And okay, they yeah. fished Lake Varner was one of the lakes they fished. That was probably uh, the big lake back then. That was the the new thing was Lake Varner. Right. Fished um, High Falls, uh, Lake Horton down in Fayette County. You know, that was a pretty good drive back then. We really didn't have any local clubs 
until high voltage came along probably about 2000 okay a year or two later and that's when we joined high voltage and they fished a lot of the lakes around the athens area like sandy creek fort yargo commerce watershed yeah lakes like that like that now this is before you've moved up to blairs correct so you're still in the athens I, area absolutely okay well let's let's go you just named several lakes that i know a lot of our listeners mm-hmm. like to fish so maybe as i name them off you can give us a little tidbit on each one of these little okay. lakes since you've let's got some it. experience on them and then we'll get back to the clubs varner the mighty varner that used to be the lake at, a, at one time that was the lake it was nothing for Having to have 25 pounds to win. We actually had 25 pounds, and I had a 10-pounder, and we finished second. I don't doubt that. That was back by at... eight pounds. Are you serious? 33 pounds won. <laughs> large yeah. mouth, I guess, I assume. All large mouth, yep. Now, I remember back in the day, I used to be on the GON forum a lot, and okay. Varner was always the talk, always the talk. And it was always funny to watch a guy holding up a monster fish and he had the background all colored out because he didn't want anybody to that's know. That's right. You know, these lakes aren't that big. So, I mean, you could give away a spot pretty easily. And that's the, You're right. That was pretty common back in the day of doing the blacking out the background. But, yeah, yeah Lake Varner is, is a real good lake. It used to have a lot of grass in it. Right. You know, they killed it. It is a water supply reservoir. So they killed all the grass out of it and put the carp in there. And now it's, it's more of a you kind of got to get out there. And we like to fish deep, me and my partner. We like fishing in those channels and... That's how we do our best in there now, especially okay. in the summertime. In the summertime, if you had to go catch one fish right now, tomorrow, what would you what would you be throwing on Varner? Probably a DT sixteen Rapala. Okay, so you're going deep though. Going still deep. going deep still. So that or a Stacy ninety jerk bait. Okay, is it still that? Is it that deep of a lake? Because we're used to Latham. Now that Latham's a little different than a lot of these lakes up here because it is a monster as far as being deep. It is. Now, it's ha- not as deep as Latham. Okay. But there is you know thirty foot, thirty five foot in the channels. Okay. Deep. Okay, so that's pretty mm-hmm. good. All right. How about Sandy Creek? Sandy Creek is a very unique lake. Okay. It's pretty old. It's been around since the early eighties. It's stained all the time. Always some, dirty. Always dirty. Sometimes it looks like you can walk across it. Okay. But it has some huge fish in it. It's got some big, big largemouth in it. So okay. this is a good time of year to fish Sandy Creek, probably with like a crankbait or a spinnerbait around the banks right now. So okay. it's, it's a good lake. It's a smaller lake, probably a couple hundred acres. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's what I was going to ask you how big. All right, Fort Yargo. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preface this by saying I fished Fort Yargo one time in my life. I actually joined High Voltage um, for one year, and I guess it was back in, it, we're probably talking 10 years ago, or you okay. know, it's been a while, and I only fished a few tournaments with them. It was my first real experience to that, but I think Yargo ruined me. It might have really? been the last one I fished, there because I remember going out there and just, it was awful. <laughs> but I hear it's great, so it, I'm sure it was me and my abilities at the time. I have fished a tournament on Yargo where one fish won everything. Okay, so I'm not alone there. You're not alone. <laughs> but last year, uh-huh. there's a club called Anchor Bass Club. We actually fished with them this past Saturday at uh, Hard Labor Creek. Okay. Took 29 pounds to win last year. At Yargo? At Yargo. Are you kidding? 23 pounds was second, and like 21 was third, and like 20 was fourth and didn't even get a check. At Yargo? At Fort Yargo, Yes. That's true. Listen, I'm almost about to have a heart attack right here. That's true. Or just say, no, the moon and stars I, I have to see pictures. Are you serious? Though, really? Yeah, the moon and stars lined up perfect that day. We, we didn't fish that event, but we saw the pictures, and it was just amazing what they pulled out of that lake that day. That is crazy that day, because mm-hmm. the day we were there, it was muddy, mm-hmm. and apparently some civic club decided to have a 10K with a canoe ride or something through there. They do a lot of that okay. there. So I'm sitting there fishing. It's my first time in this lake, and all of a sudden here come 10,000 people in canoes right by me. And I'm like, I hate this lake. Yeah. I, I never wanted to it go back. It can be tough, so. but it can be really good. There's some big fish in there. It is full of shad. Is it, it really? Is okay. really full of shad. They have a lot to eat. The fish are very fat, very healthy. Okay. But you're trying to get them to eat something fake when they got that much real stuff to eat in almost there. sounds like rocky mountain at times because rocky really? mountain is so has so much bait fish really? i don't know if you've ever fished it but i haven't you look on your sonar and it's just from the ground to the mm-hmm. surface and you know they're gizzard shad and stuff like yeah. that but okay that sounds great how about commerce you said something about commerce because our buddy shan i don't know if you've ever listened to shan ogorme he's our biologist okay podcast. he talks about commerce in that so i'm curious to hear your take right, on commerce that. watershed is probably the most shallow lake you'll fish. I mean, the deepest part of Commerce Watershed is less than 10 feet deep. Oh, really? Okay. A lot of that lake you can walk across. 
Mm. But it's got gizzard shad in it. Yeah, that's, that's and interesting. And these gizzard shad, these fish, when they feed on those gizzard shad, they get huge. I mean, like the state record crappy was broken out of Commerce Watershed like two years in a row. Really? Okay. Yes. I mean, it's just, and there's bass, and there's double-digit bass in yeah. Commerce Watershed. Yeah, now he says that. It's big. There's some big fish in there. But there again, it can be tough. I mean, you don't want to go out there in July or August. You'll, you'll, you'll zero real easily. But there's some big fish in Commerce. It's amazing you said that because his story was he fished five days, and he struck out four of them or something like sure. that. But he caught an eight and a six. Like, he caught two. Mm-hmm. And he was throwing a bull shad or – uh, a buka bull shad or whatever, just fishing around that. And he got, to, he said he liked to get his pole ripped out of his hand. That fish hit it. That so can hard. happen in there. There's some big fish in commerce water. And that's what he said. So, yep. so, okay. So I got, I got some fish. I got some fish information out of you for those listening and all. Now you said that you were the PBA and you went to high voltage a year or two after that. Or, right. or Okay. So tell us a little bit about high voltage club. High voltage was started back in around 2000, 2001 by a group of guys from Jackson EMC okay. in Jefferson. That's how they got the name High Voltage Bass Anglers. A lot of people probably don't know that. We do not know that. That's, so that's, that's where that one. name okay. come from. And it was just a very well-run club, and it just kind of grew and grew and grew. And they're probably going to this year because Dixie is not doing a schedule this year. They're mm-hmm. going to have some pot tournaments, but they're not going to be doing a full tournament schedule. So High Voltage is probably going to be drawing about 30 boats probably about every tournament this year but what a gr- what a great group of guys donnie boone runs a great club with high voltage and I-, I recommend anybody to go fish with those guys yeah now their reputation is is one of the higher standards than a lot of the clubs correct not knocking any of the clubs but right. you have several clubs that when you talk about electric only fish and high voltage is always going to be mentioned in that in that discussion right. as far as that now do they do the tec are they? Are they? They in are that? part. They are part of the TEC. How voltage they, they were? They are, and they're also part of the E Bank, which we'll discuss some a little okay. bit. Okay. All right. So, just and this is who you fish with. High voltage. I, high voltage is probably my home club. Your home club, right. like that. But now, since I've been with Elko, I try to get around to as many clubs as possible. You know, to talk shop about Elko and right. what we have and and that sort of thing. So, but yeah, high voltage would be my. My home club. Okay, and what are some of the lakes, just for people out there that are, have heard of high voltage now for the first time? Granted, I, I assume Sandy Creek, Fort Yard, going like that, but do they get on into the, you know, Latham and up this way? High voltage has gotten so big that they, they're not able to fish like Sandy Creek, Fort Yargo. Just too big. Too, too many boats. Big, too many boats. They fish Lake Varner, okay. Hard Labor Creek, Black Shoals. Okay. They'll go to High Falls. They have to fish the bigger the bigger lakes because they draw so many boats. Okay, and if you could just, you know, uh, I know you're going to speak good of your home club, but talk about the talent that's in that because people, a lot of people here electric only fishing, a bunch of good old boys out there in John boats. But from our experience, there's some really good anglers on the electric only side. I have fished a lot of big boat tournaments as well. Do I have a big bass boat as well? So I've fished it all. I've fished a Skeeter Trail. I've fished a lot of clubs. A lot of tournaments, a lot of big tournaments, but some of the best fishermen I have ever fished against in my life has been in these electric-only clubs. You want to name drop? I will. I'll yeah, name drop. That. Jesse Ballinger and his son, Stacy Ballinger, okay. would absolutely beat you to death. In these, Everybody knew when you went that nobody was comfortable till they come and wade in. Yeah. There's, there's, and Jesse, yeah. God rest his soul, is no longer with us, but Stacy's still around. He still fishes a good bit, but... They were, they were tough. Knew. They were tough. There's a few guys up here in the north that we know, when we, especially in these open tournaments, uh, we say we're going to fish, and we see who, who the ringers are that show up. And we've got, a, you know, Chris Gayton is one of them. Right. Uh, Tim Wyatt's one of them. There's just, you know, Randy Geiger. I think – no, Geiger is in high Ma- voltage. Michael Geiger. Michael Geiger. Yeah, Michael, Randy's his partner. Correct. Right? Yeah. Michael fished with high voltage for several years. Michael's very good. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, so, you know, them guys show up and we're all like, okay, well, who are we donating our money to today? Correct. So I imagine Correct. those guys are on the same yeah, they level. Yeah, they were very good. Yeah, absolutely. Michael's a great fisherman and Randy. They do very well. Now, what what do you think um, is one of the main reasons for the growth of this electric-only tournament trail and the fishing in general? You got an idea on that, maybe? I've got several ideas of why this has gone the way it's gone. Originally, I got to say probably the biggest reason originally would be the economic factor. Right. You, know, you could get into it relatively cheap, you know, get you a John boat, go fishing. You know, the first one I ever had was a 12-foot V-hull. Mm-hmm. We had a 
a 24 volt motor on the back and a 12 volt on the front. This boat was so old, we named it the Mayflower. <laughs> I mean, we even put Mayflower on Mayflower the on, on the back of it. I so, got you. But what what has happened is not only do you have a bunch more lakes that have been built, mm -hmm. but like I said, I big bass, big boat fish a lot as well. From where I let's just say from what my original hometown of Jefferson, right? There's two lakes within an hour that I can go launch my big bass boat in, and that's Hartwell and Lanier. Mm -hmm. There are 10, 15, maybe 20 little lakes within an hour right. that I can go fish. So it's convenient, too. It's convenient, and, you know, Hartwell and Lanier fish a lot alike. Right. You know, they're both deep, clear, blueback herring-type lakes. Yes, you can go up the creeks and rivers and get on some largemouth, but within an hour of my house, I can go to any kind of lake, clear water, Dingy water, muddy water, deep water, shallow water, grass, rocks, anything you want to fish within an hour from your house in one of these tight boats. Yeah, and I think that's getting where it's pretty much the norm anywhere now. You know, uh, just from our studio right here, within 20 minutes, you can be at Latham. Of course, mm -hmm. it's only 10 minutes down the road. Uh, what is it? Hickory Log in Canton. Delonica's got a reservoir. Right. Um, in reality, East Hall. What's that one over in East Hall? Cedar Creek. Cedar Creek. Yeah. So, yeah, and, you know, some of these electric-only clubs this year started doing them in Lanier. We just got off of, off Correct. Tom Thompson Creek. That's so, right. Um, they're being built a little bit better now to where it's not quite as scary to get a John boat out there on some of these. Exactly. Lakes. As long as you stay in. Right. Um, you know, stay in the coast. Stamp Creek, Electric Bass Opens, runs in, runs a tournament over in Correct. and all that. So, so, you're right. I mean, the convenience is yeah, that's a huge factor. It's incredible. I mean, it really – I mean, so if you're going to fish one of these John boats, tournament trails when he's electric tournament trails you're gonna to have to learn how to fish all kinds of water there's hammers on lanier but yeah. you get them off of lanier and they struggle a little bit uh, we're okay not, uh, yeah you're right absolutely you right know, we uh i ha had an opportunity to go to gunnersville a couple of years ago i have a bass cat and i went down there to fish in the bass cat owners tournament right. there was 300 bass cats down there <laughs> okay my partner had been there one other time and he knew of some places to go check. When we got there and got on the water, and I saw the kind of grass that that lake had, I knew exactly what to do. And why is that? Because I have fished those kinds of waters here right. in an electric club tournament before. We finished ninth out of 300 boats. And what and what lake, from Gunnersville, what lake did you attribute that to? Probably, uh, there's a lake in Gwinnett County called Tribble Mill. Okay. That has a bunch of grass mats and stuff on it. And then in some of the deep grass would be kind of like how Lake Varner used to fish or Lake Horton used to fish. That's and awesome that, that you were able to transfer that information. Right. From you know, and, and, if you, and if I hadn't have been out there fishing all these different kinds of waters and these different kind of lakes, I wouldn't have had a clue on what to do there. But as soon as we got there, on the very first day, we started hitting some of those spots that he had remembered. We got on a pattern the first day. It was a two-day tournament. And we weighed in over like 16 pounds on day one and 15 pounds on day two. And we finished ninth out of 300 boats. And he'd been there one time and I'd never been there in my life. And that's awesome, though. But it, it does go to show the variety of all these small lakes that North Georgia has. Um, and I'll keep saying Latham just because it's biased, but it fishes like Lanier now. It does. A lot like Lanier. Those spots are going crazy in Lake Latham right they now. They are going and they got the bait and, and – and it does have it does have a few bluebacks in it. Don't let nobody tell you it doesn't. It does. Of course it does. Um, you know, they'll, everybody says it's thread fin, but it's, it's got some bluebacks in it. So, and it has changed the lake a little bit. It has changed a lot it. of the bait it has. has changed it. Um, but it is it is funny because that you say that that you can just transfer it right because yeah. you actually can learn how to point fish or fishing points on Lanier. And transfer it now to some of these other lakes that That's are right. being built that are That's deep right. like that. So, but yeah, fishing these little lakes like this will make you a, a more rounded angler. It will actually make you fish things differently than if you just went from Hartwell or Lanier right. back and forth. I mean, it's a lot different. I'm laughing. Only I'm only laughing because my partner Josh has gotten into this drop shotting, and I I'm terrible at it. Yeah. But we we do. He does it on Latham and okay. he transfers and he's he's learning that he's trying to make me into a more. Um, Finesse. How, now, how do you want to say well-rounded fisherman? He's over there just smiling yeah. at me. Learn the different techniques, yeah. you know, like that. No, but I'm laughing because we can learn how to do it on Latham. That's right. And transfer it on Lanier. Absolutely. I don't like it, but we can do it. Absolutely. You know, like that. So Correct. That's funny. So at what point did you move up to Blairsville? We bought that 
boat storage business in Blairsville back in 2015. So about five years. So about five years ago. So Correct. you fished a lot of electric stuff before you got to Blairsville. I did. But I've I've also fished a lot of those mountain lakes in the past as well. Okay. Uh, Burton and Chatoog. And really, until we got up there, hadn't known a lot about Lake Notley. But you know, my boat storage business is on Lake Notley. Okay. So I've gotten to learn a Lake Notley here over the past five years. Well, okay. Let, let's let's talk a little bit about Lake Notley while I got you on the subject. Tell us a little bit about that lake. Lake Notley is probably the best kept secret in Georgia. That's okay. what I'm hearing, but yeah. It's it's probably the one that's gonna be the one you hear about coming up with the spots. You know, Lake Chateau is what you've heard a lot about over the past four or five years. You've mm-hmm. had all the college tournaments up there. And yes. The, the BASS had their championship up there, but Lake Notley's an up and comer, and I'm telling you, it's going to be, it's a good one. It's it's been known for in the past of being real hard, real tough fishing, but it's coming on good. Well, how big is that lake? Lake Notley's up about forty five hundred acres, I think. If okay. I'm not mistaken. So we're not talking lake maybe five thousand. Yeah, yeah, it's small. It's, it's small. a TVA lake. Okay, how how does that compare to Blue Ridge and and Chatoog is about seventy five hundred, I think. Okay, so and Chattoog. Blue Ridge is about the same. About the same mm-hmm. as Notley. Correct. Okay, so we're talking stripers, large mouth spots, basically It's everything. known for its striper fishing. Okay. Uh, Lake Notley is known for its big striper fishing. There's but, a lot of guides up there that, that guide back and forth on Chatoog and Notley that do stripers. Um, spots is what's really come on strong okay. up there lately. Just kind of, It's probably kind of like what's happened to Latham. Mm-hmm. In the past couple of years, the spots up there have really grown up. Really got on those blue backs real heavy, and you can go out there now and you can sack up those those spotted bass pretty good. Well, let me ask you this, just because I like to get people's opinions on this. You have I'm, I'm finding out you have really two sides. You have the largemouth guys and you have the spot guys. Okay. Now you can catch both of them, and if you're in a tournament, you need both of them at times. But the spot guys talk about largemouth as a trash fish, and the largemouth guys talk about spots as an invasive species and all that. So I'm going to go ahead and get you on record, put okay. you on the spot. Where do you lie with that? When it comes to fishing, Notley, Chateau, Burton, Lanier, I, I'm a spotted bass guy. Gotcha. I am. Now, I love catching largemouth because in these small lakes, that's the predominant species is largemouth, especially when you get south of here. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to, to the – the bigger lakes, I, I'm a, I'm, I chase those spots more than I do the largemouth. If I catch a big largemouth, he thinks he was a spot. Right. So you catch him while you're trying to catch right. spots. So would you consider yourself a finesse guy? You, you like the drop shot and stuff like that? How does it work on Notley? How about, how about let's just ask that. I, I catch them both ways. Okay. I prefer power fishing. I really like catching those spotted bass on top. I heard you know, when Jimbo was here, he talked about the wolf packing. Wolf packs are spotted bass. That that is by far the the best and most fun way to try to catch those things, and that's power fishing at its best right there. So, and I like jig fishing for them as well. So now, when you say though up on Notley, is it is it the same as what you do on Lanier? Are you offshore or throwing across a hump or something like that and bringing them up, or is it, it just a little different? It's basically the same thing. You're but you're fishing over points and humps with brush on them. And calling them up out of there. That's what you're doing. What's your favorite top water bait for that? My favorite top water bait is a chrome super spook. A chrome super spook. That's it. Yeah. You know, I hear a lot of people talking about the newer baits like the Vixens and stuff like that. And they're great. They're, they're really good. But I've probably got a dozen chrome super spooks that don't have any chrome left on. You know, a spook's been around a long time. It has. So they don't last if they're not good. That's right. And that's what I grew up learning how to walk the dog yeah. on. And I've always often wondered, okay, you see the Sammies and all these things. Well, I mean, they're doing the same thing as a spook. That's right. Yeah. And, so. it, and, if, and if the if the spook is not getting the bites, if it's a little big and maybe you don't have enough wind, then I will drop down to like a chrome Sammy 110. Right. But it, those two, either the Sammy 110, but that big spook, I mean, when they're when they're on, it's hard to beat it. They blow it up. Oh, it's, it's incredible. <laughs> They'll knock it five foot out of the water. Yeah, no, it's yeah. awesome. Because they try to kill it before they eat it. Right. There's nothing better than a good top water it's explosion. Great. It's great. Especially on a spook or something like that. I absolutely love it. So yeah. that's, that's what I think everybody needs to learn how to throw a spook. But nobody does anymore. It's kind of like out of style. Right. Yeah. You know, good. So I'm glad you – <laughs> that's what I was getting at. I'm glad you like to do it. So – um of course, you're known, at least in our circles, with being with Elko, and why I know how we can, you know, get into these smaller lakes and the importance of of an Elko on that. But what do you see as far as big lakes 
I mean, does it still have the potential for the electric motors and stuff like you would see in these smaller reservoirs? It does. We we recently have had opportunity to co co brand with Wellcraft uh, out of Arkansas. We're doing a co brand with them. We actually went out there and designed an electric aluminum boat. It's an eighteen seventy. Okay. It's eighteen foot long, seventy foot wide, and this hull only weighs nine hundred pounds. That's a big that, boat to only weigh nine hundred pounds. Absolutely, it is. And we designed it because with any type of electric fishing, batteries are a big component. Right. It just is. And so we, we made big battery boxes so we could move batteries around from front to back, you know, ever how you need to shift your weight in your boat. And th- this, this well craft turned out so well. It's a phenomenal boat. And we're running it right now with one of our EP50s Okay, on there. Uh-huh. And, it, and it's actually, this is the first time that in electric fishing and boating that we're actually getting boats up on plane, running you know, 20, 22 miles an hour in a boat. Okay, yeah, and I, I might have jumped myself because I know we were going to talk about that welded boat, but we're on a big lake, so now's as good a time as any. It is, we're, we're it good. is, and, 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 what, and one thing about this boat is if somebody like, say you had a homeowner that lived in Young Deer Creek okay. on Lanier, and they just want to go fishing, still you know, stay in Young Deer, run around Young Deer and fish and then come back home, this would be a perfect boat for them. They can go out, fish Young Deer Creek, pretty much cover all of young deer creek come back to their dock plug their boat in and they're good to go again the next day so we're actually hoping that you know this particular project we will be able to get some of these boats on the bigger on lakes. on the bigger lakes yes. and, and so this project is in works or i mean when do you expect no, it to we, be? We, we've got it now we've You've got we, it now. we've already fished one tournament this year out of it down at hard labor creek uh, with Five Alive Bass Club, okay, and, and it's, it's it's a phenomenal. I mean, you can go to Scott Edwards Outdoors on Facebook, okay, and pull it up, and you see some of the videos we have of it, some of the pictures we have of it on there. Now, when you say getting on plane, now we're really talking about getting on plane with with a fifty, with a fifty, twenty two miles an hour, twenty two miles an hour, and that's pretty. That's booking it for an electric it's, boat. Yeah, absolutely. Considering the fastest you would see one would be seven or eight miles per hour. Right. You know, and. So this one gets on plane at about 12, about 12 miles an hour is when it starts to get on plane. And then it, once you get it on plane, it'll get on up to about 20, 22 miles per hour. We feel like this is a huge breakthrough yeah. in electric boating is to have a boat like this that you can actually see these kinds of, this kind of speed in. So we, we think we've got a breakthrough here and, and we're really looking forward to it. We want to get it out in front of everybody. We want everybody to see it. Now, one thing about this particular well craft is you don't you don't have to get it with a fifty. I mean, you can get it with one of our twenties or or whatever. Right. You, you know, and so, it'll still push just fine, just not on a as quite a high speed. Correct. Correct. So, I mean, this this we're offering these boats, you know, through Elco with well craft, you know, with any motor with any motor we have. Absolutely. Now, what would you think? Uh, maybe you know the exact numbers. Would be the runtime of a boat like that if i was just going from point a to point b not coming back if i just wanted to take off in it like a 50 how long would you know just i'm sure battery life has a has a limit right, right. now with the technology gee i've never been asked that before right <laughs> right I'm it's, sure. one, it's one of the most asked questions in electric boating and, it, and it's really pretty simple mathematics based on the the, the size battery you're using okay what's your amp hour rating on your battery versus the amps drawn from the motor and probably the best way to explain it would be if you had a 150 amp hour battery system Mm -hmm. and this this motor pulls 150 amps that's one solid hour wide open pretty much like that right that makes that makes perfect sense to an idiot like me that's 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 exactly the way you need to say even me and but, you know, you don't run it wide open all the time. Right. You know, I like to fish. So exactly. I'm fishing, and I'll run it from place to place. And, you know, if you got the right size battery matched up with the motor like that we recommend, you wouldn't have any problem fishing a full eight-hour tournament at all. That's awesome. No, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you said that. Yeah. Just because I'm going to ask you, have you had any kind of pushback just from people that you've had out there testing? I mean, it's no. nice to know just, okay, if somebody says, well, I don't like that, but y'all were able to take that and fix it, or just some of the suggestions or stuff like that. Not really. You know, one of the biggest things you hear is like, well, that's not what John Boat Fishing is about. It's supposed to be economical. You know, why do we want to spend $40,000 on a boat like this when I can go spend 40000 on a bass boat? Well, I explained that earlier. Right. You know, you want to spend $40,000 on a boat that you can go fish 15 lakes on 
or you want to spend forty thousand dollars on a boat that you can go fish two lakes on. Gotcha. That makes, so yeah. that kind of you know makes sense of why you know you want to get a boat like this and the fishing's great. You know, a lot of these water supply lakes are county water. Yes. Right. So the water quality is phenomenal mm-hmm. in these lakes. And that's how these fish thrive so well right. in these lakes. And, but and the county intends to keep it that way. They intend to keep it that way. But, yeah, we haven't had a lot of pushback with it. You know, okay. that's kind of been kind of been the only thing I've heard a little bit is, Just, is, is the price. But a lot of these boats, people, you know, like I see Ultrex motors on you know, on these boats. I see Panoptics on these boats. So these yeah, are, I know. <laughs> these are already some high-tech boats yeah. anyway. So – they, they've, they've come that far, you know, over these 20 years to where some of these boats have the same kind of electronics and stuff that a bass boat would have anyway. So just put the boat underneath it. I understand that yeah, completely. Absolutely. Let, let's, 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 let's take one step back to uh, what I would consider what we've seen on the, we've seen several of these Elkos on, on some of these electric only Correct. tournaments. Some of the guys we fish with have them. Now, what are the exact sizes? Now, you said a 50 and you said a 20. Right. What sizes do does Elko offer? We have a we have an EP5 okay. that's a 24 volt motor. Okay. And then we have three 48 volt motors, which is the 99, the 14, and the 20. Okay. The 20 is probably our most popular tournament motor because it's the most bang you can get for a 48 volt system. Okay. And then we have an EP30 and an EP50 that are 96-volt systems. Okay, so those are the big boys. Those are the big boys. Where are we talking? Where are these things manufactured at? The, these models were actually made in New York. They're actually assembled here in the States, up in Athens, New York. Absolutely. And we're very proud of that. You know, say our motors are American-made. So they're all assembled up in Athens, uh, one by one. Uh, so American-made. American-made. Okay, so let's go down to the 24-volt. Okay. And just compare it... Um, I don't know how you would compare it to trolling motors that not most of these guys have right. on the back of their boats. So if I have this one of yours, what I mean, what are we comparing? I mean, apples, oranges. It's kind of hard to. Yeah, you know, the thing about these Elcos, right? Which I, I used to run these trolling motors on the back of these boats. They're not designed that to would... be the sole power purpose or propulsion of a boat. That's correct. Circuit that's true. boards burn up in them. Mm-hmm. They, you know, we've melted batteries, and that's just not what they were designed to be. Okay. Okay. You still see a lot of them out there yeah. doing it, but you talk to a lot of them, and they will confirm these problems with these. They get hot. They overheat. They shut off. These outboards that we have, that's what they're designed to do. They are designed to be the main power source of a boat. Gotcha. They're durable. You're not having to run your front trolling motor. While you're running down the lake, you know, you're saving that battery for fishing. Right. And they're water-cooled, so everything in there stays oh, okay, cool. They okay. have an impeller in them just like a like a Yamaha outboard or whatever. They look like an outboard motor. That they do, yes. They don't look like a spaceship motor like some of these look out there. <laughs> there's, some, there's some interesting ones I saw that today. But, uh, kind of look we're very proud of, of the product we've put out there on the market. And you see them out there. We're probably, I'd say, three or four to one over the other competitors combined is what you'll see here in Georgia on the lakes. Well, yeah, they're a good-looking motor. There's mm-hmm. no doubt about it. And it's funny you say they look just like the Yamaha. Um, we were fishing a tournament. It was last year, and uh, I think it was an open tournament. But Merrick McClure has has one of these Elkos on the back, and we were on Correct. the back side of Latham where the road comes across at the culvert. And some gentleman, and I was within eyesight of this, some gentleman stopped because we all know that on Latham, you cannot have a gas outboard That's right. attached to your boat. That's right. Cannot have it. Yep. Uh, Mark and them won't let you do it. But this this guy knew that rule, mm-hmm. and he stopped, and he started kind of fussing a little bit right. from the bank. You can't have that in there. And and Merrick kind of played along with him, like, what are you, what are you talking about? You know, and he finally told him it was electric. But I was that just goes to the look of the motor itself. It does look like a gas power. Correct. Power down. Now, is that on purpose? You, you know. Well, we just, we wanted it to have a traditional look. Okay. You know, that, that's you know, it was nothing you know intentional that you know we wanted it to look like a, uh, you know, just a gas motor. We we wanted it to look like a, a you know, a classic traditional looking outboard. And, and it does. It, it does. does. It absolutely does. You know, so, we used to see a lot of that. I get a lot. I mean, I, I got stopped on Lake Horton by the DNR <laughs> when we first rolled out with them here. Right. But people are starting to learn more and more about them, and you're not getting as much flack on the water of people. I've had them yell at me. Like I said, I had the right. DNR stop me one time, and 
So it's gotten a lot better. What do you say to the guys that fish these electric only tournaments that are on a budget? And because it happens, it's, just, it's something that happens. And it so does. You, you get them in there and they've got a couple of trolling motors. And when we have our blast offs, which if you can call a blast off an electric That's right. tournament, That's... everybody starts, you know, tortoising down the, uh, down the way. But the Elko guys are the guys with the other brands. We, we, right. won't, we won't say no other brand, but as they take off, you know. No, it's not fair. It's not fair. Right. And you got to answer that question. So so I'm going to let you answer it, not <laughs> me. I'm going to throw it in your in your court. Answer that. Well, how would you explain that to somebody? Just Well, the way I explain it is I actually had this conversation with a guy that said, well, you know, it just it ain't it didn't right, you know, that you know, y'all are able to go out here and, and run these kind of motors, but yet he had just put an Ultrex on his boat. Right. <laughs> $2,200 for an Ultrex and – our EP five is like tw- is twenty six hundred, but you know it, right. it wasn't fair for to, for us to run an Elko, but yet it was fair. You know, it was no problem for him to spend the twenty two hundred on the on, on the old tracks. Right, gotcha. So I mean, it's it's but that that can be related to big bass fishing. You know, you can see all these big bass boats out there that have you no know, two two depth finders up front and oh yeah and, you know, and, you absolutely know, I mean, it's the same concept you know like well that ain't fair he's got two you know two 15 inch screens up front with pan optics and all of this and right i'm about you know so it's kind of relative i got you at that point but i'm gonna tell you something i've been beaten by trolling motor guys a lot out there i mean trust me the motor don't catch the fish that's right that's no you're absolutely the motor right don't catch the fish um but it, it, you know, they are nice, and they do they do have some giddy up and go when they when you know, they do. It's pretty. They're, it's, they're pretty impressive. It is they pretty are. impressive. So they are. How long has Elko been around? Elko's been around since eighteen ninety three. See, and that's why I asked because I looked it up today, and and I wanted to make sure I was thinking and reading about the same company. It's the that, same company. They have been around since eighteen ninety three, since the Chicago World's Fair in eighteen ninety three. That's what they used. Wow. The, you know, to haul you know people back and forth to the fair. And I'll give you a fun fact. Thomas Edison bought an Elko. Are you serious? Isn't that pretty cool? Yeah. It is a good fact. He did. So I like learning he things did. like that. But Elko got in the in the outboard business, I want to say around 2013 or 14. Okay. That's when they got in the outboard business. And I, I got involved with Elko early in 2015. Okay. And so, what exactly is your relationship with Elko? Well, I actually signed on with them as a, a sponsorship deal with them. They sponsored me in in these electric only tournaments, but I developed such a relationship with, with them and they're such a great company and I believe in their product so much that I'm now an actual rep for them down here in, in Georgia, pretty much the Southeast really. When that, we now have several dealers that are selling Elko's advantage boat center in Cumming is an Elko dealer. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Dalton Marine is an Elko dealer. That wouldn't surprise Marine me. In, Marine installers in Monroe's is an Elko dealer. So we have a lot of dealers down here now that are selling the motors for us. And I call on those dealers and I talk to people all the time and try to answer questions because people have a lot of questions and that's a big investment for somebody. And I want to make sure that they have all the information they need to make the right decision on what motor and batteries that they need. Oh, okay, so you are the man, though. I am the man down here. You are the for man Elko, down correct. here for and, Elko. Okay. And that's been in 2015, and, you know, it's just been a great, great partnership between me and Elko for over the past five years. That, that's excellent. Give me a couple examples of some of the most common questions you get from somebody thinking about buying an Elko. Other than the battery question. Other than the battery, because <laughs> I got that one out of the way. <laughs> How fast am I going to go? Okay. okay, there's a lot of factors in that as well. The boat, the weight of the boat, length of the boat, width of the boat, the whole displacement of the boat. So there's, you know, I try to get all that information from them. Tell me what kind of boat you got, you know, what's the weight of your boat. And I can, I can get them pretty close, pretty close on what the kind of speed they're going to get with each individual motor we have. Now, so I've run them all. Now, when you start when you start asking that person that question, you get a lot of blank looks in your face. Like I never thought about the hull of my boat or stuff like that. They right. don't consider any of no, that. No, and and here's the thing about it: one mile per hour in an electric only lake is a lot. Oh, good lord! It's yeah. a lot. Okay. <laughs> yeah. People yeah. chase up until now. We think this Wellcraft project. You know, obviously, you're going into a whole different stratosphere with right. with it being on pad, but. Without putting a boat on a plane, on plane, you're looking at you know seven, eight miles an hour. 
people will shift batteries around, move around to try to get a tent. It's like NASCAR. It's no, it's like NASCAR. It's incredible. It, it is. is. It's like cheating in NASCAR. Yeah. It's exactly like it. Uh, um, you know, Josh and I, it, we watch our, our, when we're going, we look at our depth finders and, you know, sometimes we're, with the wind at our back, we're hitting 3.6. We you know we still run the trolling motors and stuff like that. Right. Like that. But when, you know, as the batteries wear down during the day, you say a mile That's per right. hour means all kinds of, oh, 2.9, we're slugging it, you know. And you can tell on a, on a it sounds silly, but a mile per hour, you can tell. It's, it's, it's huge. And what I try to tell people is when I, when I talk to them and they're like, okay, I can spend $4,000 or four or $5,000 and I'm gaining one mile per hour. You know, they're like, I can go six miles per hour running three one hundred ones on the back and a one hundred one up front. I'm going, you know, five point eight. You know, right? You know, but you're telling me if I spend forty eight hundred dollars, I'm only going to go seven or seven point five. That's a big, big difference. It actually it's is a huge difference. Plus, you're not burning your battery off your front trolling motor. Now, what is the best type of battery for an Elko now? Because I'm getting there's all these new technologies coming out. You got the lithiums and stuff like that. What, what pairs up with an Elko the best? We, we have a set of recommendations. Okay. With our with like each individual motor, but we recommend at least an AGM type battery, a Type 31 AGM battery for like our 24 and 48 volt motors. Uh, they don't. I mean, our motors will run off of 48 volts no matter how you get it there. You can run any four batteries in series or get 48 volts to it, and it will run. How long it will run depends on you know, the quality and the size of the battery that you have. Right. So a glass mat, an absorbent glass mat battery, Type 31, is kind of our minimum requirement, the recommendation that we that we give people for the 48-volt motors that we sell. Okay, so if somebody – that's information I'm assuming somebody comes up and they go to one of these places and they're going to purchase it – the each individual like Dalton Marine, they know this specific information, right. or they're going to say, Scott, we're going to sell one of these on Tuesday. Can you come down here and talk to this guy? Or they know it already. Yeah, I, they, most of them, most of them know it. Okay. Um, you know, and that's that's my job to make sure they know it. Gotcha. You know, because this, you know, electric boating is, you know, Dalton Marine. They've been in business for how many years? But they've only been doing electric motors now right. for a year. Right. So there's a learning curve for everybody. It don't matter if you've been in the boating industry forty years. You know, there's still a learning curve and a lot to learn about the the batteries and all that in these motors. So yeah, that's you know that we got a, a lot of education, a lot of educating out there, right? Getting them getting them up to speed on these on these recommendations that we have. As far as the United States as a whole, is this something you guys see taking off everywhere, or is it is it really got like a stronghold like in the South, Northeast? Or do you just kind of see it kind of just spreading everywhere? No, it's there? spread. It's spreading everywhere. You know, we we've been all over the states. You know, doing stuff. You know, that's one thing about Elko. They're they're not only just about building their brand. They're also about promoting the whole industry and the whole concept of electric boating. So they they involved with a lot of stuff throughout, and and that's the beauty of, of Elko is the stuff they get into like that. Yeah. Do you see your market right now being more of the sports fishermen? As far as this, or the pleasure boater that might just have a pontoon? That's that a great it. question. Yeah. Actually, we have sold more motors to pleasure boaters okay. that may live on these lakes. I mean, if you have a house, say, on Lake Varner, mm -hmm. you want to be able to enjoy the lake, too. You know, so you may have a pontoon, and we've put several of these on pontoon boats and over just, the past few years. And they get out and just tool around. Works just fine. Works just, just fine. We uh we put y'all for me with big canoe. Oh, well, absolutely, yeah. They have a rental fleet of electric boats at Big Canoe, and they have it's a seven boat rental fleet that they have over there, and they put our nine nines on twenty four foot verandas, pontoon boats, and those boats stay rented from daylight till dark every day. I have no doubt about that whatsoever. Every day. And they power them with lithium. They have okay. a 48-volt lithionics battery pack that they bought from lithionics. And they've had Z – they put over 10,000 hours on those motors last summer. They had zero downtime, none. That's impressive. Now, yeah. how, how tight are you with those people up at Big Canoe? Pretty tight. Because there's some nice trout in that lake. There's some big old bass in that lake. 
Well, hook a brother up. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you you already got one foot but in there. They, they stock that thing with trout, and then people catch the fire out of those things, I man. Know. I, I did a lot of heat and air work in Big Canoe over the years. Really? Yeah. And It's I, a pretty place, isn't it? It is a pretty place, and I probably spent more time riding around looking at deer and yeah. turkeys they than I did crazy. work, yeah. and that's probably why. Bear. I, I mean, I've seen bear in people's yards up there. Oh, absolutely. They're everywhere. They, yeah. got, they got hogs now. so They do. Um, you know, they got Dawson, a hog problem. Yeah, with, the, with, that, with that Dawson Forest off the back side. But I've driven across that dam a million times, and I, I, I you know, used to, I thought, maybe I might be wrong, you used to could buy a permit to go fishing in there, but I don't think that's the case anymore. I think you've got to be with the owner or – Something like that. If you're with a with with an owner, or I think if you like, you know, VRBO a house in there, you have access to it for the time that you're renting the house for the week or whatever gotcha. in there. It's a beautiful lake. It's a beautiful lake. They're getting ready to add another pontoon boat this year. They're so busy and they stay so full, so they're finna add an eighth. That's sure. awesome. Yeah. That's that's good business. Yeah. So. And that that's one of our biggest testimonials with our motors about the the how in the endurance that they have and how stable they are and how good they are and how bulletproof they pretty much are. Those are people that don't own boats. Right. That's true. Yeah. You know, you they, know they're the best getting. boat drivers yeah. in the world, best boat operators in the world. And like I said, they went all summer long, 10,000 hours and never had an issue. So that, that's funny. Cause you, you kind of equate that to a rental car and we all know how we treat a rental <laughs> car right. when we get it. So that's right. That, that is impressive. Yeah. So you, you brought up the fact that Elko likes to promote and they like to promote the, the industry itself. So, we have this thing called the e-bank. Correct. Okay, so I know a lot of the people that fish with us and these, you know, are familiar with it. But for those that are not familiar with what e-bank stands for or is, let's okay. fill them in on that. Well, back in 2015, we held a tournament down on Lake Varner. It was called the Dixie Duel. We'd done it along with the Dixie Club at that time. And uh, we had 40 boats. That's a lot of boats on a 700 acre lake oh it's a ton so we had a we had 40 boats and the elco jumped in as the title sponsor of that event and the winner won an elco 20 that that's a big prize that is a great prize and it was the, it went over i mean it was so well i mean it was so well done and so well run and everything just just ran so smoothly we had 80 anglers but we probably had another 150 spectators out there for the weigh-in and it was actually on the Pursuit Channel. It was actually filmed, and that event was on the on the Pursuit Channel. Okay, that's excellent. So we decided to take it a step further and say, okay, look, let's let's do a national event. We'll call it the Electric Bass Anglers National Championship. That way, any club out there can get involved. It doesn't cost the club any money. It doesn't cost anything to to participate. The only thing is, you've got to have fifteen boats in an event. To for it to qualify for an e-bank event. Okay. And you pick five tournaments throughout your club schedule. It can be any five you want. And then you submit your results to our tournament director. And then he submits it through our points. We have our own point system off of y'all's results. And we take those five tournaments, plug them in for every club that participates. And at the end of the year, the winning, the winning team wins an Elko. Okay, explain the points kind of a little bit. Well, our point system, we kind of keep it under our vest a little bit because okay. we don't we don't want you know people to try to manipulate anything out there. Not saying they would, okay. but you know we don't want it to get out to where, well, you know, we don't have a chance, you know, early on, and they really don't. It kind of fades off on into the into the tournament schedule. Gotcha. And we don't post any results because, like, we have some teams from up in Maryland. Their season doesn't even start until June. Well, uh, down here, some clubs have already done fished all five of their yeah. e-bank events. By June, yep. You know, a, a couple of years ago, Merrick won all five of the e-bank events, and he won an Elko. If a, you know, some of these clubs in Maryland had seen somebody down here had already already won every event, they were like, "Well, heck, they ain't gonna need us doing it." So we we, we keep all the all the results in house, okay, and then at yeah. the end of the year, we announce a winner. Okay, so. Explain so basically five tournaments, five tournaments of your choice, of your choice. Mm -hmm. So your anglers are competing with themselves, mm -hmm. but they get a there's a point system based on how they finish in right. their club, right? They submit their results, their weights, their finishes to our tournament director, and then he plugs in those results to our point system, and then we have our own point system. So, you from have, there. so, so into the secret war room. Or, oh, I can't even say that right. War room. 
up there and you have your point systems. All right, so let's let's talk about that. What would keep somebody from and I'm not going to say merit, but somebody in that situation from taking like a smaller club that they can kind of dominate, you know, is there is there a way to kind of is there any Well, that that's why we require 15 boats in there. You got to have at least 15 boats to participate because if you had a, a club that only had six or seven boats, then right. yeah, you may, you know, what American and him done was phenomenal. Yeah, he had a good year. To, to, to do that. And so it, they barely won. There was another club up in Ohio that won four of their tournaments and finished second in another one. How do you think they felt? Right, yeah. Well, <laughs> probably like the guy down at, at, at Fort Yargo going in with 20 pounds and he got beat with or whatever it was that tournament. Yeah, so 29. Right. Yeah, so um, – okay, so that kind of – there is kind of – and not really protocol safety things, but keep right. you from cheating. But there, you can kind of. That's one of the ways. You know, you got to have some boats and, 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 and stuff like that. And the thing about it is, they're free. I mean, it's, that's it, true. It costs, yeah. I mean, so why wouldn't a tournament do that? A tournament trail do that? Yeah. I mean, there, there's no risk, no feed, and a chance to win a motor. We had over six, six hundred anglers last year participate in the e bank. How many states you got into now? Well, we got Georgia, North Carolina. Maryland, Virginia, Virginia Club won it last year. Um, Ohio, right? And it's it's just getting bigger and bigger every every single year. It is. That's impressive. Mm -hmm. So, how long do you think, or, or what would be you think you could take that nationwide, or, or at least you know, I mean, well, that's the plan. You know, that's we the we plan. want it to be nationwide. We we work it every year. We've really put a big big emphasis on it this year with social media and. So we want everybody to, you know, get out there and check it out and and take and be a part of it. I mean, take a chance to win a to win a brand new Elko. I mean, it happened to Merrick here locally two years ago. So uh, take advantage of that opportunity. It is. It's, it's a good opportunity. And if somebody's listening to this and that that you know they're thinking about starting a club and or their club doesn't participate in this, where can they go to get that information on that? They can go to elkomotoryachts.com. And they have a link on there. You can go to my Facebook page, Scott Edwards Outdoors, and or you can go to the Elko Motor Yachts Facebook page, and you can get all the information from there. You can message me on Facebook. I'll be glad to talk with anybody about the e-bank. About the e-bank. That's awesome. Absolutely. That's awesome. And that, that's growing, and I think this is growing. Um, where do you see this sport going in the next 10 years and the technology with it? Well, it's going to continue to grow. I mean, I keep hearing of other lakes, you know, on the docket to be built, you know, for water supply. And I, th I think this electric boating in general, you know, even with the, the Go Green initiative that you hear from everywhere, right? you know, you're going to start seeing it more and more and more. And hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll get to the point of where, you know, we're, we're up there with like electric vehicles and we can get more and more of these, these boats on the water in some of these bigger lakes. It's as well. It's funny you said you were the Tesla in our in our conversation. Yeah, we we, <laughs> we kind of we kind of joke around saying we're Tesla on the water. Tesla you know, on the so water. We, so. we strive to to be there. How about you? I mean, you know, as far as fishing, you gonna you gonna you think there'll be a day where you just go back? You know, I know you're making all the rounds, but once you become so popular, you're just gonna go back to fish with high voltage full time. And, I'm, and I might. You never know. You never know. I I, I love getting. I've really enjoyed going to all these different clubs. You know, really, what's the best part of that? Meeting people, you know, meeting people. You know, a lot of the clubs, you know, I'd heard about, you know, I'd heard about SWAT before. I've right. heard about the Dahlonega Bass Ang John Boat Anglers before. and But until I, I really started going out and repping with Elko, I really didn't get to all these clubs because we, we were fishing for the points championship in our home clubs. Right. But uh, I made it a point to, to go visit some of these clubs and fish with them. And, man, I, everybody has been so amazing, so friendly. That and, is true. You know, a lot of I've met a yeah. lot of nice people fishing these clubs, and and this it's been good for Elko as well. You're starting to see more and more Elkos pop up out there. They are, and just go and mainly be there to answer any questions anybody would have about just electric boating in general. Maybe not just necessarily Elko, but anything about electric boating or anything like that. Just to be there to answer those type of questions. What is the most common mistake you see people making? As far as other than not buying an Elko, maybe in the electric only realm or something you see that you wish you could go over and say, listen, if you would consider this, um, would it be the dual trolling motor guy or, or, or 
battery guy, 12 battery guy. I mean, what, what right. would you be? Bat- batteries. I would, you know, the one, one mistake I see made is people just limping back in, you know, to weigh in sometimes just having to use their one motor to get back. <laughs> Look, we've all, <laughs> do, we've all done that. Right. We've all been there and we've all done that somewhere in the past. And that's p- probably the biggest, I'd say probably the biggest thing I would like to see people do and educate people on is just your battery systems. In battery these, system. whether, whether you're running Nelco, whether you're running two trolling motors, three trolling motors or whatever, you know, batteries are, are always the fly in the buttermilk when it comes to electric mm. boating. That always. is true. That is true. So um, I'm, a, I'm a person, I'm listening to this podcast. I've got an electric only rig. Right now, I'm running a couple high-dollar trolling motors, and I'm doing pretty good on my speed and everything. But you have piqued my interest with the outboard talk. Sell me a motor. All right. You're running motors on the back. You're running trolling motors on the back. If you are serious about your fishing, Mm -hmm. and you want to take your fishing to the next level, you need to get you an electric outboard. Okay. Now, I can tell you why an Elko would be your choice there. All right. Because I I think our motors outperform all of the other motors out there. But you're going to have more time on the water, more fishing time, running from here to there. You'll probably probably increase your fishing time by a lot more than you think you would while you're out on the water. And you're going to have that peace of mind that you can go anywhere you want to go out there. You're going to get back safely. And you're going to have the best product available in the market when you're out there with an Elko. Okay. Now, that all sounds real good to me. And I'm going to be a stubborn customer. Do it. Uh, That sounds real good. How long will I have to run this Elko to recoup the cost of, like, buying trolling motor after trolling motor? I mean, when does it pay? How does it pay for itself? That's my question. All right. We've had these motors out for probably six, six six-plus years now. Okay. Now, I don't know how many motors you've been through at this point, and I don't even have to know how many motors you've been through. Okay, good, because okay. I didn't want to lie. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Get on Craigslist or get on eBay and try to find a used Elko somewhere. You know what? That's really good before you do that, because I've actually looked. They're not there. No, that is true. That They're is not there. True. The people that are buying Elkos are still using them. The only time I ever get a call about somebody wanting to sell an Elko is they're wanting a bigger one. Okay, Somebody's got a 9.9, nine, they want a 14. Somebody's got a 14, they want a 20. You know, can you help me sell this one so I can upgrade? But I, I challenge anybody, get out, look, they're not, they're not out there. And, you know, we're going on six, seven years now. Right. And so people really love them. They're very durable. They're going to treat you right on the water. You will not be disappointed in this motor. Okay, I, I'm going to believe you, everything you said because I have actually looked. Yeah, I have looked. I have done that before. I mean, so. that, I mean that's a that's a big testimony there with with the Elkos. They just people, if they were not good motors, you would see a lot of them out there for sale right now, used ones. That that's a pretty good testimony in and of itself. Yeah. Okay, well I tell you what, Scott. Um, I'll be honest. When you came down here, you know, when we scheduled this, I'm like, well, we're gonna talk. You know, I told Josh we're gonna talk some, you know, about the Elko and the electric fishing. I didn't really have a lot of experience with it um but i have learned some stuff tonight that, good. That, that's pretty good and again if somebody wants to get in touch with you about purchasing an elko or you kind of mentioned to me off camera about anything electric right. only i mean you, you'll feel the question about anything i'd be happy to talk to anybody about any kind of electric boating question when it comes to the boat motor wiring batteries it, it got to be about purchasing an elko uh, I believe education is the best best way to go forward with m- having somebody learn everything they can about electric boating because I promise you, if it could be tore up, I've done it so experience, in 20 years. So experience. And, and how would they get in touch with you again? Go to Scott Edwards Outdoors, and you can send me a direct message on Scott Edwards Outdoors. It's probably the best way to, to get me. Yep. Okay, well, I tell you what, I, I've actually thoroughly enjoyed the conversation, yeah, yeah. especially the part about all the lakes and stuff, too, because right. we're still – this motor stuff is all great, but I'm still a fisherman. Me too. Like that, Me so. too. It's been it's been great. Like I said, I appreciate y'all really putting some focus on 
these North Georgia lakes. We got some fine ones here. We, we do. Big, little, and small river streams. They're all very good. It is. We, we're blessed to live where we live. We're very blessed. So we call that grace. That's what we That's call right. that. So, but I tell you what, I appreciate you coming hey, by. Thank you. I appreciate it. And and let's let's revisit this in a year. Let's just do. Just to see. Let's uh, do. Hopefully, and, we'll have some a lot more information on this Wellcraft project at that point. At that point, and when is the actual e bank fit? When, when is the the, the When's the motor giving away? The, toward the end of the year. Okay. Have, when the last event is done with the last club, you know, they have all the dates, they have to submit their dates that they're, that they're going to have their tournaments. And when all the clubs are all finished, then we'll have an announcement and on our website announcing the winner and all that. that that's pretty good. And I think you know, let's revisit this in a year. And okay. then this year we'll actually – not that we didn't pay attention to it, but maybe put a little more focus, you know, as we go throughout the year, we'll kind of watch, you know, what, what our local clubs are doing and then Correct. see how it all ends Correct. up at the end of the year. And we'll talk about that. And, too. If, and if somebody is interested in joining a club, you know, you'll ask them if they are part of the e-bank, you know, if you've heard about the e-bank and you're looking to join one of these clubs, you know, I ask them, say, look, do y'all participate in the e-bank series? And, you know, just kind of ask them. Can't hurt nothing, can it? Can't hurt a thing. Like I said, it co- it doesn't cost a dime, and somebody's going to get a free motor. That's awesome. Scott, I appreciate it. Hey, I appreciate it. it. Thanks for having me. Right. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Fish North Georgia podcast. If y'all have any topics or guests you'd like to see in the future, leave it in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button, click that bell, so that you'll be notified of any future videos. And don't forget to give us a follow on Facebook and Instagram at Fish North Georgia. And we look forward to seeing you soon.